Assalamu alaikum. Why do we have 60 seconds and 60 minutes and 24 hours? While everything that we know is based on a 10, actually. Why 10? Simply because we have 10 fingers. <laughs> That's how it went. So people needed to count things. And they need, when you need to count things, you need to compare them to something. And this is the only thing that you have in, in front of you easily. Then I gather 10 and 10 and 10 and 10 and 10 and 10 of them is 100. 10 of them is 1,000 and so on and so on. And that's how the metric system worked. However, see first how this happened, how we reached to 60, how we reached to 12, how we reached to 24 in this video. If you go back in history, you will find a lot of documented evidences from the ancient Egyptians showing that they used to use sundials. And you will find that most of the historians will credit the Egyptians for doing this, that they divided the day into smaller parts. Maybe they were the first, some will say the Sumerians and some will say other civilizations. Usually they used to use shadow of the sun. So they put a stick and by the shadow of the sun, you can tell where exactly everything is going. But the weird thing about this, that they didn't think about the day like we know now. They used to think that, okay, I will divide the morning into 12 parts and then I will divide the evening into 12 parts. So regardless of which is longer or anything, not like now, okay, it was a little bit different. So the Egyptians used the Dewey Decimal System. The Dewey Decimal means the 12th system. And simply they used this because there were 12 lunar cycles. So, okay, it makes sense, 12 months. So the time is made by 12 times something. So I will divide it into 12 as well. Or others say maybe because when you count with your thumb, like you see, you have different parts in your finger with the joints, and these are 12, three in each finger of the four, so it will make 12. In the morning, we will put the stick, seeing the shadow that is coming from the sun, and so on. What will I do at night? No shadow. Sometimes there is no moon even to get the shadow out of it, right? And depending on the shadow of the moon will not help, okay, because it's totally different. So what will I do? So since there is no sun, I will depend on the stars and depending on the constellations that I can see, there are some that appear when there is light of the moon, some they don't appear, so when it's totally dark, they found 12 stars, they can divide them into different 12 divisions of the night and accordingly this was the hour at night. There is also the clepsydra or the water clock. It was also used to record time during the night because you cannot depend on the light of the sun, of course. And it was maybe the most accurate for timekeeping at this time. There is a timepiece found in the temple of Amun uh, in Karnak, and it's dated around 1400 years BC. Once the morning was divided into 12 hours and then the evening was 12 our divisions as well. So here came the concept of 24 hours per day. Easy. However, why 60 minutes? Why 60 seconds? Let's see. You will find that the Babylonians, as well as the Greeks after that, they were using the sexadecimal or base of 60 system. And they inherited actually this system from the Sumerians as well. So Sumerians, followed by Babylonians, followed by Greek, 4,000 years old. So they were using already the base 60. It made sense at that time. If I have 12 and I have 10, what is the number that will mix these two and will work? Apply the two together, right? So I'll find the 120. But there is a smaller number, actually, that can divide this number by 10 and by 12. It will give you a real integer. A full number which was 60. so so far so good we agreed that we have 12 in the morning 12 in the evening that give us 24 hours we have 60 minutes we break it into 60 more you will get the seconds and so on and so on and so on everything is fine 
although when they came to the milliseconds and microseconds it went crazy again <sighs> but again the metric system usually makes more sense okay however for the hours it's a different thing like we but what about the year is the calendar that we are using now fine actually this hit me when i used to see people who were born in the year 1000 1000 plus and then you see that they have two different birth dates and then i read the word julian calendar what i know that the world now is using the gregorian calendar right so this is called gregorian calendar which is january february march you know the 12 months we know until december however julius caesar did something different and apparently this was used for a very long time let's see this actually is it only this or there are more okay i know there is the hijri calendar okay i know also there is a coptic calendar there is a hebrew calendar and maybe more let's see let's check let's start with the julian calendar so basically julius caesar since he went around the world he went everywhere you can see his descendants everywhere in the year 46 bc just 46 years before the uh, birth of jesus the romans okay had this calendar julius caesar reformed this calendar and call it the julian calendar apparently and of course we know it's depending on sun okay so it's depending on the rotation of earth around the sun when it makes a full rotation they took this they divided it into 12 months and with a leap year every four years you add an extra day to february this is what we know so february is 28 days three years and then the fourth you get a 29 like the year that we have second one is the gregorian okay so basically the julian calendar was not so accurate okay because every you have one year that is different than the other years and so on so pope gregory the 13th decided to introduce the gregorian calendar in 1582 so anyone who was born be before 1582 will have a different birth date that, than what we know. The only thing is that it calculated the leap years better. It skipped 10 days to realign the calendar with the solar year. So this makes a difference actually in days. So you, you might be thinking it's somehow end of December, but actually it's start of January. Sounds familiar. Yeah. Sounds familiar. So basically, these 10 days that they skipped made this difference between the Julian and the Gregorian calendar. So someone who's born 1581 will have the difference in this date. So you might find really someone who's born in December shifted to January because of this. Then we come to the Hijri calendar or Islamic calendar. And basically the word Hijri comes from the word Hijra. And this actually meaning migration. So when Prophet Muhammad, uh, may peace be upon him, والسلام, moved from Mecca and went to Medina, which is another city in what we call now Saudi Arabia. He started a new life. He started with a new community. And it was the start of having the Islamic community in Medina, a community based on justice, equality, there are no any more suffering. From that date, the Muslims or the Arabs decided to take this date as the start of the new Islamic calendar. This happened in the year 622, based on the Julian calendar in this case, okay, not the Gregorian. And this consists again of 12 months and these are lunar months, meaning the rotation of the moon around Earth. So this is based totally different than the solar one. This is based on the lunar one. And uh, it is 354 or 350 days. It is shorter than the solar year, being a difference of 11 days every year. So actually, if you are uh, 40 years old, in the Gregorian calendar, you are 41 years old by the lunar years or on the Hijri 
calendar. There is also the Hebrew calendar. So the Hebrews decided to do something different, okay? These guys have the solar, these guys have the lunar, let's combine them together. So they made something lunisolar. Complicated, but it works. And this goes to the biblical time, so let's say the 9th century, and it combines lunar months with a solar year, so it adds a leap month in the 7th, out of every 19 years to keep in sync with the solar cycle. So it depends on the moon. It adds a leap month in the seventh out of every 19 years, giving you the required sync. The world of China, of course, was different. 14th century BC, the Chinese calendar started. And again, it's a luni solar, like the Hebrew one and it's been used for centuries in China and in other East Asian culture as well. So it features 12 or 13 lunar months with an intercalary month added approximately every three years to match the solar year. So it's different a little bit and of course this creates a lot of differences in so many other things. The Mayans were amazing actually. They decided the start and the end at the same time. Started it in the 5th century BC, so something around 2,500 years ago. Several cycles. The cycle was around 260 days, and uh, there is another one that is 365 days. And this was actually counting historical periods. And they were saying that it will end by 2002. And you know the movie and everything that was talking about that the world will end by this date. But no one knows the end when it is. So, sorry minds, wrong calculations. And there is the Persians. Persians, Persian calendar, was adopted in 1925, like 100 years ago. Solar Hijri calendar. So they took the Hijri from the Muslim side and they put the solar touch to it. It's still based on the ancient Persian practices with a modern touch since 1925. It's 12 months, 365 or 366 days. The year begins a vernal equinox and leap years are determined by astronomical observations. So when were you born? If you follow the Julian calendar, when will your birthday will be? And what is your Hijri date of birth? What is your Hebrew date of birth? What is your Chinese or Persian date of birth. That's interesting. All of us living on the same earth, talking different languages, but we are still under the same sun and under the same moon. And yet we see time different. Luckily, at least, that my minute is your minute. My second is your second. My hour is your hour. Our year is a little bit different. Interesting. Thank you. See you in the next video. If you find that this is good, like it it's up to you it's your reaction you do whatever you want thank you so much salam